Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Unit Lost. I am Josh, and I'm here to bring you even more pro over analyze from the finals of Stage 4, LA Valiant versus NYXL. What hell of a series. If you didn't watch it already, go and watch it, because I'm going to be spoiling the hell out of it. Okay? Good. You've been warned. Okay, let's wait for the Lucios to swap away. They're just there to give a cheeky speed boost to the teams. And there we are. Let's take a look at the team comps because this is very important. Now then, the teams are running mirror comps. Widowmaker and Farah core on this map, on Gardens, and it's going to make everything kind of revolve around sight lines. Crucially, we are going to be paying most attention to Pine because that's really the linchpin of how NYXL are doing. And this position here, actually where the NYXL flag is kind of just marking right here, this position is the position that we really do care about when we're talking about Pine because what we're going to see is MYXL trying to control a lot of space and anytime the MYXL control the point Pine is going to position here this lets him bounce over here for example to contest this angle he can either contest here he can also bounce this way very easily and then contest straight across the point or he can contest this way he can contest this way he can contest this way it's like it, there's many many little angles that you can find with this this makes Pine very difficult to control and how to control Pine is going to be crucial to LA Valiant taking this map. Now then, as we roll the footage and get into the first fight, well, we're going to see that Janice is just poking around. He's looking perhaps to spot out where Soon is. They're looking to, you know, make sure that Pine has the line of sight that he needs. As he spots out Libero, is going to trade a couple of rockets with each other. But crucially, most importantly, as I stall and wait for the one singular moment, Pine is going to go and look for a little bit of a flankeroni. He manages to get that opening shot because this is what Pine does, okay? Pine is just a beast. He is a monster. He only has to sort of see you for a split second and he is going to kill the hell out of you. Manages to find soon while Caster gets the res and you know while Caster was resing there was also no healing happening and Waxel have used this opportunity to push onto the point, take it over, take over all that space and now you're going to see Pine reset to that spot that I mentioned at the start where he can just easily control things. Libero who's going to be poking over the top just scouting out where the enemy team's positioning. Janus and uh, Mecco crucially doing the same thing. They spot out okay well Valiant are coming through lower. Pine's already set up there, has the advantage over soon and takes him out no problem bounces back to where he's going to start most of his fights from and just starts building up a bunch of headshots soon on 47 percent ultimate charge at the moment pine on 100 percent has infrasight ready for the next push again has this crossfire angle team is occupying one position pine is occupying a separate position has an angle has the shots and well la valiant are super worried about what pine is doing what pine's up to libero finds himself a nice little angle a nice little way in gets some rockets down and ends up taking out most of the valiant who realized okay we've got to reset but where Pine is big boss, Soon is going to have to play some Solid Snake uh, style of gameplay. You can see him there on the bottom right corner. He's right on the low ground. And he's just sneaking through. He manages to spot out the lone Libero. Libero so often abandoned by NYXL. Very irregular to see Libero sort of get heavily supported or a lot of healers on him. Ends up going down soon. Ends up getting a little bit of support from his supports as well. Agility finds the opening to get onto Pine while Pine is trying to counteract soon. And lo, Big Boss has fallen to Solid Snake and there was no lighter involved this time. If you get that reference, well done. You know your game in history, I suppose. Or you watched an LP somewhere like I did. Anyway, right. LA Valiant taking control of the point. Great stuff. Let's see how LA Valiant try and beat out Pine now, because now LA Valiant are in the situation that NYXL were in a couple of moments before, right? They have control of all the sight lines. They have control of the angles. They know where the enemy team's coming from because they all have to leave spawn. Agility is going to be taking a quick look. You can see Soon has reset to that position where Pine was occupying earlier, and they're just going to try and slow down the enemy team. Now, they spot out that, okay, Libero is out here on his own in the open, but it does mean that Libero gets onto Kareev, and Kareev doesn't get the support for it. Something beautiful happens here that you don't actually get to see the payoff for, which is Libero is out here in the open, and he gets killed by a Diva Bomb, because there's no cover out there, so the Diva Bomb just blows him up. Crucially during this fight as well, Caster had Valkyrie, and so the Winston Primal Raging in that backline was never going to kill anyone. Janus was like, had people trapped on the corner, but Caster's healing is keeping, keeping them all fine and dandy. Meanwhile, Fate is doing the same thing on the opposite side, but there's no mercy healing there for them, and so when Janus realizes, oh god, I'm just going to sort of be a punching bag here for their team, backs out, soon pops out straight away, gets a shot into Pine, takes Pine down, fine and dandy. Okay then, right. Take a breather, because that was that was a lot. Ha! Ah. So then, again, you can see Agility's looking, trying to measure out where the enemy team's going, where are they positioning, where are they going through, can we cut them off? Unfortunately, in this case, this is where Pine starts to 
sort of really shine. Soon, you know, if Soon was Pine, then you'd see a couple of kills. Soon does have Infrasight available here. He knows that he can take an angle. Misses one, misses two. Now Pine is on him. And crucially, now Libero is also on him, hunting him down. He sort of looks if he can get a shot here, but he knows that Pine is going to be looking for him. But Pine actually does something a bit uncharacteristic, which he just goes on and finds himself a pair of fine and dandy kills. Now then, you don't get to see those yet, but there is a replay. And the replay is going to highlight why soon, uh, why soon, why Pine is so terrifying. Why Pine, you know, when he enters the map, you know that Pine is going to be everything that you're obsessing over because he does something that no other Widowmaker really kind of does, or struggles to do, shall we say. So, there we go. So, just waiting, 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 waiting. There's the replay. That's what I wanted. This is what we want to see. Just gets himself one shot. Now, you know, that one's, that one's pretty good. That one's a pretty good shot. Whiffs his grappling hook, makes you feel better about your own, and just gets the airborne fire from the side in a headshot. No problemo. Like, it's it's ridiculous. And again, just nail soon for a final time. This is the power of Pine, right? If you don't have control on Pine, if you can't get the Winston to Pine, you can't put Diva on Pine or anything like that as well, because NYXL are just getting ready to sort of pocket him and protect him, well, then it's going to be a problem. Gets agilities, but this is Pine's weakness. He's trying to kill Custer. He doesn't need to kill Custer. Custer's in so much trouble. Custer's out of the fight, and they can probably send a Diva to go deal with that, but Pine goes and stands near the edge. Fate jumps up and gives him a slap on the ass with that primal rage and dunks him in the ocean. This means that, well, okay, now your primary DPS, Pine, is down. Libero is having a bit of a tough time finishing this fight up. Gets a, an iffy barrage, but does manage to get the mercy, but there's just not enough support for him. Like, Animo is panicking, trying to heal everyone. They're not really used to playing around Libero, uh, ugh, Libero and Space ends up getting the, the finishing blow on him as their agility dunks a bomb on it, a uh, barrage on him, rather. Pine now is swapped onto the Tracer, and this is where LA Valiant are probably grinning ear to ear because Pine's Tracer isn't the greatest. Let's let's leave it at that. It isn't the greatest, and we're going to see exactly how that sort of affects this matchup as we go on to the next map. But the crucial takeaway from that map was that they stopped trying to match Pine. Basically, Soon can't just take one-on-ones against Pine. He's too good for that. Pine wins that matchup every time. So Soon going a little bit more flexible, looking for little angles, looking for little spaces to get himself at one pick at the very least, and then and Valiant then taking that advantage, using that advantage to then pressure Pine, then kill out Prine, and then Prine. Pine and then going and finishing up the fight. That is the big deal there. That is really the crux of how this matchup worked. You saw them, you know, committing a diva bomb to get rid of Libero, for example, and then using the extra space that creates to go and pressure Pine. So everything they're doing is setting up these kills on Pine. Now I like this as we load on to the second map. I'm gonna pause it here just as we get a cheeky shot of Tracers back. Because LA Valiant have changed up their strategy. They are playing a full dive cut. What is this? What is this What is this? What year is it? You know, this this isn't the, the meta now, but Agita's in the game. Surely you can't play dive when Brigitte exists, but LA Valiant are doing this because they know they can use it to pressure out Pine. They also probably know that NYXL do tend to play Widow Tracer here. Like they're going to go Widow Tracer or Widow Farah probably on this map. So they can kind of do what they want. Chances of the Brigitte are pretty low. So as we roll this one out, they're just going to, you know, take a little bit of a side angle, and then Animo is spotted instantaneously. Pine is also actually isolated straight away as the supports have to look after each other. Fate, and I imagine soon get onto Pine, take him out. Jonak does pick himself up a kill. I mean, he's Jonak. This is a beautiful boot by Custer, by the way, that sort of results in the Winston getting launched off. The kill credit goes to Agilities, but really I think that was Custer's, just getting him a little pat on the bum there as he gets dunked onto the sidelines. And Agilities is doing a really good job here as well, just finding these tanks, getting all the damage into the back of the tanks, building up his ult charge nice and quickly. And against any other Zenyatta, this would be huge. But he's against Jonak. And so Agility has done a superb job of building up this Dragon Blade super quickly and has managed to sort of survive as well and is continuing to build up ult. Pine has come back and because Widowmaker is, unsurprisingly, as a sniper, very good at long-range combat, is already having an impact in the fight as Pine just pops up again. Agility does a really good job slowing down the fight. It's city center, so stalling is kind of the order of the day. And, you know, neither team is really willing to commit to this, but Agility has that Dragon Blade in his back pocket. Unfortunately, yeah, Jonak builds up fastest, uh, the fastest transcendence in the league, so this is the net result. But honestly, I'd say that this is a pretty good trade. Like, you trade an early Dragon Blade for an early transcendence, and NYXL are actually positioned on the back foot as a result as well. Valiant have a much better position here. They're on the point, they have a lot more cover, the enemy team has to play into them, and Widowmaker doesn't really have a good angle. You saw sort of Pine trying to go through a very narrow space to sort of get there. Manages to get Kareeb, but had to do it so slowly and carefully that Pine doesn't really have the same impact in this fight as he had in, you know, in the previous map on Gardens. So now, well, NYXL have to panic. They're swapping things up a bit. They're realizing that the Widowmaker, the sightlines aren't quite in their favor. There's too many flanking routes for the dive comp. They're changing to the Brigitte, and they're changing to the McCree. 
Now this is going to cause problems primarily for Agilities, who is just going to really struggle to get anything done, say, with these Dragon Blades. We also have Soon making a classic Soon play. It's always good to see Soon doing this stuff. This is really important to do if you are a Tracer player, by the way. Just doing this every so often, especially if you have a Pulse Bomb, finding a place where you can chill out and be careful, pop out and just get an instant kill with the bomb. It's a really big deal to do this, because what it means is that NYXL, if they want to make another push, well, they're going to have to be that much more careful. They know that Soon does this kind of stuff, so they have to take their time, check the corner, scout them out appropriately and stuff like that. If you're playing on ladder, then you can use a Hanzo to do it much more effectively, but it's something to always keep in mind if the Tracer is able to do these kind of strats. A bit of a, a spacing bomb from space. I'm not entirely sure where that one was prompted from. I think space took a bit of damage there, so I had to reset just to recycle the bomb, so that's partially why he did that. And now we're going to see a beautiful dive get ex uh, executed by Valiant, and this is what makes Valiant so good in the series, in my mind, is because Valiant looked so... Chris, they look just like NYXL. This dive is superb, okay? The moment the Winston lands, Genji's landing at the same time, so both of them are kind of covering each other. It makes it hard for the Brigitte and the McCree to actually stun up the Dragon Blade, and as a result, Agilities gets these kills. They had a transcendence there as well. Even if the stuns do come through, they have something to sort of, you know, dampen that impact. And now, well, NYXL have swapped Tracer, uh, swapped Pine onto Tracer, rather. That's a big deal, right? Remember me saying, Pine's Tracer? Not that great. And crucially, this is a matchup that now, well, Soon can take one-on-one -on -one every single time. And Soon has actually been having a bit of a rough time this series, but now he can he can just win it out. And that wasn't even a recall by Pine, by the way. I believe that Pine just blinked back onto the bomb and ends up dying to it. They do get the res, unfortunately, for Valiant because of that positioning advantage. And as a result, well, now there's a fight of uh, six versus one advantage going towards the NYXL. They have Libero in the sky who can just take his time. They have the Transcendence as well. And now that they are, they're using the Transcendence to basically push their advantage and just push the fight over the limit and actually take the point for the first time on this map. But this is the thing with Valiant. Valiant have been playing so well and, like, you can make an argument of, okay, well... You know, that Valiant are halfway to a Dragon Blade, they have a couple of resources, but no, Valiant know that, okay, well, you guys are playing uh, this comp, we'll just mirror you and we'll outplay you on it. Agility seems to be outplaying Libero in the sky, Soon is outplaying Pine on the ground, so if you want to keep playing this comp, we're going to win and we have a Transcendence to do it with as well in this fight. Pine gets spotted out, has to retreat back to the rest of his team. This means they know where the Tracer is, so now Valiant can start pushing forward and occupying more space. Pine ends up getting pushed towards Soon and Soon one clips him. And again, this is sort of that thing that we see continually in this series between Pine and Soon, which is that when it's a Tracer on Tracer, Soon is just winning out every single time. LA Valiant start using their ultimates just to take space, so space throws out the Diva Bomb, pushes them towards the point, and now there's a massive advantage to LA Valiant. LA Valiant can just afford to take this fight slowly in the point. They can just use the Transcendence, use that Transcendence to clear out a couple of tanks, clear out the supports on the ground. They don't have to really worry about the Pharmacy in the air, because if they clear out everything on the floor, the Pharmacy has to come down to deal with them. Soon, unfortunately, doesn't you know end up winning out that fight. But again, they can just take their time as long as they keep this point contested. And I think they actually flipped the point. Yes, they did flip the point during that last fight. So NYXL have to just stay on this point. But they're doing it into a pharmacy that has all the room to maneuver. Agilities can do what he wants. Libero has to be very conscious that the moment those tanks are low and the moment those tanks die, he has to come down to earth, has to come down to the ground. And that is just playing into LA Valiant's favor. And there we go. LA Valiant beating out a Widowmaker duel that they were losing in outmatching NYXL in terms of just being flexible and adapting to the situation and you know technically on paper I'd say NYXL are the better team but Valiant played better as a team and that ladies and gentlemen is why I think LA Valiant won the series and in this case beat out the big boss himself stopping Pine. I suppose only time will tell whether NYXL can bounce back from this stage four finals loss and come back in the playoffs and the finals or if LA Valiant will continue to ascend with their wings out. Either way, I have been Josh's one voice amongst many, and I'll see you guys next time. Toodles.